And so if you could turn your Bibles over to Exodus 14 and 21. Exodus 14 and 21. Now, this is the story of Israel. And, and of course, we understand the Bible that at some point uh, they found themselves captive. They found themselves captive in Egypt. And, and, and we understand that there was one that, that grew up uh, uh, amongst them, which was the, uh, called to be their savior. He was a man who was supposed to help them through the power of God be free from that captivity. And so the Bible talks about Moses and how Moses was raised up in the king's house, but then he, he refused to be a part of something that he was not in agreement with. And so he got himself in some trouble and ended up finding himself on the backside of the desert. And many of you guys know the story, but eventually he came back and he came back on a mission to set the nation of Israel free. Amen. And so he went to Pharaoh and, and he told the Pharaoh, look, you, my, my people are in bondage, need to be free. And so God did all these miracles and brought all these signs and wonders to convince Pharaoh to let the nation of Israel free. And so the Bible says eventually Pharaoh said, you know, enough is enough. God is too powerful. We're going to release them. And so the Pharaoh of Egypt let Israel go. And so the Bible says that Israel left from the, the kingdom of Egypt, and, and, and all of a sudden, Pharaoh changed his mind, and he said, you know what? He said, I, I'm going to destroy them. I, I let them out, and he said, but I'm going to send my forces to kill them. Amen? Now let's go down to verse 21. And, and, and so Israel was at a place where they, they had been in captivity, but now they were free, but they were in a place where things seemed like they were getting out of control. They were in a place where it seemed like they were going to be killed because all of Pharaoh's army was running after them. And it says in Exodus 14 and 21, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And so here they were, and they were in a place of, of seeming like everything was over for them, seeming like they were about to be killed. And the Bible says they were begin to cry out and said, the Lord brought us out here to die and all these things. But, but God still moved on their behalf, and he did something great and mighty. He parted the sea and allowed them to walk over on dry land. Amen? How many people in here know that God is able to do all things? How many of you understand that by the power of God, nothing is impossible to us? Sometimes we look at ourselves and our own abilities and our own might and our, our own whatever we think we have, and we say, well, it cannot be done because I can't do it. Or we say it cannot be done because they can't do it, or we can't do it, or people can't do it, or that's never been done before. But, but with God, all things are possible. Let's go on to verse 23. And it says, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians." And so here is Israel being in a difficult place, and God did something mighty where he parted the sea, and Israel began to cross over through the sea on dry land. But here's the army coming in after them. But what happened? God showed up again, and he began to trouble the armies. He began to bring issues and problems, and they began, began to be frustrated, and they began to realize that they weren't just fighting a person or people. They were fighting God. And let's keep on reading. And it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of 
the sea. And so all those armies, all those great armies that came to destroy Israel, that, that, that were fierce and saying they was going to get them, and no matter what, they was coming after them, the Lord showed up time and time again and caused them to flee and to die. Amen? Amen. And, and so today we're going to talk about, and the message for today is power. 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 We, we talked about love. We, we talked about the necessity for us to love. We, we talked about faith. We, we talked about holiness and these things uh, God has made available to us and requires of us, amen, to do. But today we're going to talk about the one thing that many people don't realize that God requires for us to work in, and that is the power of God. I've seen people walking in love. I've seen people standing in faith. And I've seen people who go out and try to live holy and do all these things. But many times I don't see people, the people of God, people who call themselves Christians, people who say they're children of the Most High God. A lot of times we don't see them walking in power. But I, what I want you to understand in all this, that just like love is a foundational principle, just like faith is a foundational principle, just like holiness and living right before God is a foundational principle, so also walking in the power of God is the foundation of who God has called you to be. But we miss that many times. We miss that the power of God is available to us and, and God works in power. And when we look in scripture, we see time and time again, we see God moving in his great and mighty power from the beginning of time when the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth and things that weren't became and, and out of the darkness came to light and all these great things and God created the animals and he created people and so God moved in power from the beginning. He brought destruction. He birthed things out. He closed things off. He killed things. He made things alive. From the beginning of the Bible, God operated in power. He even sent his prophets to call down fire from heaven. He even sent his son to die on the cross, be dead in the grave, yet rise again. But why are we Christians walking around don't realize that that same power that operated from the beginning is the same power that's available to us. We, we read the Bible and we read of all the great things that God did and, and the power that God did through man and how man did great and mighty things through man, but we sometimes Sometimes somehow feel like maybe that's not for us. Or we think that somehow God's power is all of a sudden turned off. Or maybe he's not operating in power like he used to. But then I see in scripture and I see that Jesus said, when I return, he says, I'm going to come. And, and he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and I'm going to have the judgment. And, and he says, I'm going to do great in my things. He says, everybody in the world shall see me. And, 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 and he said that, that, that everybody will bow to me. And, and he, said, he said, but those who call on my name will be saved. And, and, and so Jesus said, look, I'm, when I come back, I'm coming with great and mighty power. He says, I will descend out of the heavens. And so there'll be all these things going on, all this great and mighty power flowing. But, but somehow... We dropped off the power in the Bible and the power when the Lord comes back in the end and we stuck here in the middle not believing that God's power is now. So what did God become a light switch? Did he turn his power off? Oh, I got the Bible now. I'm going to turn the power of God off. But then when I come back, I'm going to turn the power back on. Don't you know that the Bible went over thousands of years? The Bible is, is a collection of books that were written over thousands of years, but through the entire thing, God's power was moving. So for thousands of years, God's power moved through man, amen? For, for the thousands of years, God did great and mighty things through man, but all of a sudden, we feel like that maybe for this century, that God's not moving in power anymore. And so what do we do? We go out and we begin to do things and accomplish things under our own strength. We begin to go out and do things and accomplish things under our own power, 
under our own understanding because we feel like that maybe God's not moving like that in a more. We, we don't want to trust God like that because it seems impossible, even though Jesus said, so we walk around and we say we believe Jesus, but we forget that he says, look, if you ask anything in my name, he said, what did, what did he say? That, that it's possible that it could happen for you. And so we say we believe in him. We believe that he died for our sins, but we scared or think he might not do what we ask or that his power may not move for us or that it may not be available for us. And so we ask ourselves, is this really for me? Is his power truly available for me? I, I saw Jesus, he, he, and in the Bible he was healing the sick and, and he was you know, uh, 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 people was blind and he was giving them sight and people was lame and, and he was causing them to walk. And, and, and we saw all these things and, and, and Jesus did all this stuff. And we could say at that particular time, we could say, well, Jesus did that, but that was Jesus. That was the son of God. So he, he was God's son. So, you know, and that's what we say. He had special privileges, right? Because he was God's son. Now let's go over to John 14 and 12. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Did he say until next week? Did he say until my death? He says, he says, those he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. But I want you, this is the part I want you to get to understand what is available to us. And it says, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. It says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I do, that the father may be glorified in the son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. So Jesus said, and I'm, a, I'm paraphrasing, he, I mean, it, he, Jesus was saying that, look, y'all saw me bringing the sight to the blind. Y'all saw me bringing the dead back to life. Y'all saw me having power over devils. He says the same things that you saw me do, he said you shall do also. He says, but greater works will you do. Does greater mean that we don't do what he used to do? Does greater works mean that the power is not available anymore? Greater works means that God's power over time has become more and more magnified. Amen. Amen. It is us that just don't believe that the power is available to us. Amen? And so I got down here. Power is a core of Christian belief. And some of you may not have heard this before. Power is a core of Christian belief. And the Spirit gave me this. He says, it is a cumulative manifestation of the other core beliefs. Now get this, what I'm saying here. It says, the combination of faith, love, and holiness in the name of Jesus gives you access to the power of God. I'm going to read this to you again. The combination of love, faith, holiness in the name of Jesus gives you access to the power of God. Of God, Amen. Meaning that if you are a Christian who's walking in love, who loves God and loves him enough to not stand in sin, whatever you shall ask in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. And so the power is a basic core of who we are as Christians, but we, we miss, for some reason, we miss that component. And, and, and so we say we're people of faith, but some people think that when you say you're a person of faith, you're just believing that Jesus died and rose on the third day, and that's it. 
But when God called us into faith, he called us to believe that Jesus died and rose on the third day, but also believe that because he's with his father, then greater works are available to us. And I think that's the part we missed, that Jesus didn't just die on the cross for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins that we may walk in victory. How do we get to the place of victory? We get to the place of victory by walking in the power of God. Think about a story in the Bible where the disciples were out and there was they saw Jesus moving in power and authority and all that stuff, and, and they loved Jesus, and, and they was trying to be holy and all these things, but they couldn't cast the devil out, and, and, and they was frustrated, and, 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 and Jesus came along, and Jesus was like, what's going on here? And he cast the devil out, and, and the disciples, they was concerned because, you know, folks was talking about him because they were supposed to have been with Jesus, but they didn't see the power. And so they came to Jesus to the side, and they was like, and, and, and he said, what, what, what is this? What, what's going on? And, and Jesus said, because of your unbelief, he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. There it is right there. And so they was missing that. Remember that talk about the core, the core beliefs? bring into a place of power. They, they were missing that faith component. And so Jesus said, look, if you have faith, nothing will be impossible to you. If you believe, if you trust God, all things are possible. I tell people, faith makes the impossible possible. Just because something happens for you and you have faith doesn't mean it's something that's possible in the realm of the world. Sometimes people will, as a Christian, when you stand in faith and God moves, people will come behind you who are not Christians or not people of faith and try to do things the same way you did them, what they saw, and they won't get the same result. And they'll even sometimes think it's impossible, but they don't realize that faith makes impossible things possible. But it only comes through faith. Amen? So I got down here some key components to the power of God. Number one. Now, you know, in righteousness ministries, we, we, teach, we teach a no limits type of God. Amen? And so I got down here, no limitations. If you're truly going to believe God, if you're truly going to believe his word, you have to believe there are no limitations to the power of God. If God created things out of nothing, if he created the heavens and the earth, if he breathed life into us and we began to breathe, if he created the fish and the animals and the water and the sun, the moon, the stars, if he created all of space and all these things, can we believe all that and not believe that the power of God is limitless? And so there is no limitation on the power of God. Number two, it's not man's. It does not belong to man. Man has a little bit of power, but God has all power in his hands. And so what man tends to do is that man qualifies things as impossible according to their ability. And so anything that's classified as impossible is classified that according to whoever classified that's ability or perceived ability for it to happen. Amen? But with God, there's nothing impossible. Amen? Number three. It's founded in love and accessed through faith. It's founded in love and accessed through faith. You cannot walk in the power of God unless you love God. You cannot access the power of God. You can't just, some, some people think, and I, I've seen people do this. People got into this thing where they started thinking that God was somehow like a, a magic wand or something. And they can just go out and do whatever they want to do and get whatever they wanted to do. 
through the power of God. But I'm going to tell you, if it's not founded in the love of God and his will, then you can't have access to it. Amen? And I got down here, accessed by faith. Founded in love, accessed by faith, meaning that you have to believe. You have to believe that regardless of what it looks like, it is possible. You can't access the power of God unless you believe the power of God is possible. If you don't think it's possible, then you can't access it. You can't have the power of God because it comes to your belief. Not that you possess it or own it, but the power of God won't move on your behalf unless you believe he will move on your behalf. All right. Number four, available to all believers. The power of God is available to all believers. Remember I told you it's a core belief. It is a, is a core belief of us as Christians to know that God's power is available to us. What does the Bible say? Greater is he that is in you, what? Than he that is in the world, right? Don't you know that we have God's spirit on the inside of us? The same spirit that was on the inside of Jesus Christ is the same spirit that dwells on the inside of us. And so when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit comes into your life, all things become available to you through the power of God. I think we miss that sometimes. And sometimes we stay in places of bondage. We stay in places of, uh, 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 that God has not ordained for our lives because we don't realize we have the power to come out of it. Because we have perceived that where we are is where we're going to be. I'll tell you, I had a dream several years ago, and I, every time I would go to sleep, I would be in jail. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, man, did I do something illegal? Because I kept having these dreams that I was in jail. You know, I would be locked up. I'd be like, I'd be in a dream, I'd go to the desk, and I'd be like, I'm in jail. I'd be like, what what I do? And the lady at the desk, would say, well, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I don't see you in the system, you know, but you're supposed to be here. And I was like, what? But why am I here? Nobody could ever tell me why I was in jail. And so I'd be walking around the jail. And the weird part about it was when the other prisoners would, would go and have to be in their cells, I could still walk around the jail. And so I'd be walking around the jail, but I'd be in the jail, and I'd wake up, and I'd be all frustrated, and I'd be like, what's going on? And so night after night after night, I'd be walking around inside of this jail. Nobody could tell me why I was there. So it started to frustrate me. At first, I was just like, whatever, but I started to, I, I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I said, what is this? Am I, have I done something wrong? You know, am I in trouble that I didn't know about? And the Lord said, he said, the next time you have the dream, he says, why don't you just leave? And I was like, okay. And so sure enough, next time I went to sleep, I was in the jail. And I remembered in my dream what the Lord had said. And I saw the door to the jail, and I walked. I opened the door and walked out, and I stood outside, looked back around, and nobody said anything. And I went a little bit further, and nobody said anything. But I realized that I was only captive because I didn't realize I had the power to leave. Sometimes us as Christians stay in a place of bondage, a place of captivity, a place of the devil ruling over our lives because we don't realize that we have the power to be free. Amen that God has put the power in our hands to come out of our situations. Amen? And so the Spirit of God wants you, the Spirit of the Lord wants you to know that you have the power to overcome. Acts 2 and 17. It says, And it came to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men 
shall dream dreams. Sister Rodea says, look, in the last day, how many people believe we're in the last days? It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. He says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. His spirit is power. You can't separate his spirit from power. And, and, and so God is pouring out his power on us. As believers, God pours his power. And you see here, God even begins to talk about what begins to happen. They'll have power to begin to prophesy and dream dreams. That means they're tapping in to the infinite power of God. Because God has poured out his spirit. God has poured out his spirit on everyone in this place. But you're not going to see the power of God unless you believe that it's available to you. Unless you believe that when you prophesy, that it's going to come to pass. Unless you believe that when I trust God, he's going to work everything out. Unless you stand on his word and know that he is not a liar. As the Bible says, he's not a man that he should lie. And know that every word that he's given will not turn void. Unless you know those things and have faith in those things, then many times we won't see the manifestation of the things of God. I say this all the time. That people want to hope their way to the things of God. I hope God heals me. I hope God blesses me. I hope God helps me get over. I hope God, God got to do something. I know I done said this before. God got to do something fast if he's going to do something. That was me hoping. We have to know. We have to know that God's power is working in our lives. Just know it. When you get up in the morning, you should know that the power of God is flowing in your life. You should know that when you speak to a mountain, that, that through the power of God, that mountain will move in your life. You should know that if God knows there's a need in your life, then somehow he's going to get the provision to you. How many people in here has God done something and you didn't know how it was going to happen, but it happened? Amen? That was the power of God. But we have to trust him. And we have to know that his power reigns supreme. I'm going to tell you something. God will make, and some of y'all get excited about this, God will make strange and mysterious checks show up in the mail. <laughs> However, he needs to get something to you. There's been times I've been in need financially and somebody called me up and be like, hey, can you do this for me? And this is not what I can pay for. And it's out of the blue. They'll just give me a whole bunch of money. And I'll do the work for them, and it just come like that. That's because God's power is able to bring provision into your life. Hey, I was without a job. I had no income. And I was praying to God. And God told me, he said, I want you to go sell some cars. Matter of fact, he told me to go sell used cars. So I was like, okay, Lord. So I went to the car place, and I interviewed with the guy. And he's like, all right, you can start tomorrow. I was like, man, that was easy. Look at God. How much you pay? Oh, you don't get no salary. I'm like, what you mean? I mean, I'm going to be here all day tomorrow and I might not get paid. Well, that's how we do it. I'm like, Lord, what in the world have you done to me? Is this God? <laughs> that's how we do when things don't work according to what we think or how we think they're trying to to move, but how many know with God all things are possible? And so, for the entirety, for the entirety of that month, I'm gonna tell you something, brother. That was my second month at the dealership. It was like 40 salespeople there. For the entirety of the month, people were catching me on the lot, telling me I want to buy it. Hey, hey, excuse me, can I buy this car? I had people coming up to me saying they want to pray for me. I had people coming to me telling me God sent them. I had people coming to me telling me that you don't know where your blessings are coming from. And people were coming and just buying. People was like, what in the world's going on? Do you know I sold more cars than anybody in the entire dealership and made, I think it was $10,000 for that month. 
that was the power of God. God was showing me, look, son, I can bring provision to you anytime I want. However I want. Through whoever I want. Now, I could have said, oh, they ain't paying me no salary. I don't believe this is God. I'm going to try again. And went somewhere else, and they may have paid me $2,000 for the first month or $1,500. But I would have felt better because I was on salary. That's what happens when we look for guaranteed things that are guaranteed by man versus trusting in God. God gave me three, four times more than I could have ever gotten from a job at that time. Amen? But we have to trust in him. We have to know that there's power in his name. We have to know that there's power in him. We have to know that he is a what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Meaning that his power will show up for you if you keep on the course loving trusting, believing, and living according to his word, he will show up and show out for you in your life. Let me tell you something. If you want to have a direct access to the power of God, begin to call on the name of Jesus. If you really want to see the power of God move, call on the name of Jesus. I was watching a video of this woman. Uh, some of y'all may have seen it, but there was a video of this woman. She was working at a cash register, and a robber walked into the store. And he had a gun, and he ran up in there real fast with a gun. He was like, give me all the money. And that woman stood up and thing, and she pointed her finger out like this. I was like, man, that woman about to get shot. <laughs> she pointed her finger out, and she said, in the name of Jesus, and she was, she was from the country, in the name of Jesus, leave. And she kept on saying it. And the man with the gun began to shake, and next thing you know, he ran up out the store. There's power in the name of Jesus. And we might say that and say, oh, maybe he was in church and he was scared of God, or maybe he was this and that. Maybe there was some others. That's what we tend to do. We tend to try to explain away the power of God. Maybe there were some circumstances surrounding that. But let me tell you, there was a time where I was when I first started the church. There was a woman outside the church, and uh, she was outside the church working. And um, I heard somebody screaming at the top of their lungs. They were screaming and crying. I was inside the church getting ready for service. And I looked out, and I was like, that's the woman outside. And so I looked out there, and there was three Rockweilers. You know Rockweilers are those big, the big dogs? There was three Rockweilers out there attacking her. And I was like. What in the world? I mean, they was nipping at her, and she was going backwards, and they was biting her hands and biting her feet and biting this and biting that. And I was like, what's going on? I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a gun. I didn't have a stick. But all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord rose up in me. And I don't know what. If I think back about that, I was like, man, I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably would have beat on the window or something. <laughs> but <laughs> thank God the Spirit of God took me over. Amen. But something came over me, and I ran out where she was. And you know what I said? In the name of Jesus. And when I did that, them dogs, like, stopped biting her. They looked at me, and then they just walked away. Sometimes I tell people that, and they be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But it actually happened. They looked at me. They didn't bark at me. They didn't snap at me. They didn't run at me. And I was with probably the distance between me and my wife. And they literally looked at me and walked away. They didn't say nothing else. And I said, wow, there is power. In the name of Jesus. By whose name should every knee bow? bow? The name of Jesus, right? And not everybody going to bow because they want to. But that's how much power 
the name of Jesus has. That's how much authority comes with the name of Jesus. Don't y'all know when, when Jesus showed up and the man had, was full of devils, that the man was out there acting foolish and doing crazy things, and they ran up and fell at Jesus' feet and started worshiping him? All the people were scared of him because they was wild and doing all this kind of, he was wild and doing all this kind of crazy stuff. But the devil saw Jesus and they began to worship at his feet. And they even asked the Lord, have you come to torment us before the time? They were fearful of Jesus because they knew his authority. They knew his power. It's amazing to me that sometimes devils understand the power of Jesus more than Christians do. Where devils are running and fall at Jesus' feet. We won't even call in his name because we got a cold. We put more confidence in was a, a, a Mucinix. My wife said Mucinix. <laughs> we put more confidence in, in what's that, a, a emergency. It's the first thing we run to when we see. I'm going to go get some emergency. What if we would say, when we get sick, I'm going to go get some Jesus. Let me call on Jesus three, four times. Let me take a dose of Jesus. You'd be amazed at some things that you would skip over. You would be amazed at maybe some sicknesses that were coming into your life that may not stay that long. I think I had this one time I had the shortest cold ever. I had a full blown cold for a couple of hours. But during that time, I kept on calling the name of Jesus. I took Jesus and I began to beat that cold over and over and over and over again until I guess it just gave up. There's power in the name of Jesus. But we have to believe that that power is available to us. Do you believe the power is available to you? Do you believe that you call on the name of Jesus that devils will flee? Do you believe you call on the name of Jesus that, that anything is possible to you? When Jesus would tell people, he said, look, if you ask anything in what? In my name. In my name. He says, well, he'll do it for you, right? So let's talk about how the power flows. We're doing a little bit of a teaching today, okay? The power of God flows, number one, outside of man, by the faith of man in word, by the faith of man in deed. I'm going to say this to you again. The power of God flows by God outside of man, meaning that God can show up and show out without man being involved. We saw it many times in the Bible, right, where God just showed up and did stuff. He moved in power. He moved in authority whenever he felt like it. So sometimes God power moved without us being any ways interacted with it, okay? But it also flows by the faith of a man in word, meaning that you speak, or you believe, or you confess, the power of God can move. But sometimes, and this is where I've seen some Christians get messed up, is that God's power also moves indeed. I've told people before, the Spirit of the Lord says, if you go out and you do this thing, by doing this thing, you will find healing. And what do they do? They don't go out and do. But they believe. But they don't do. And then they don't see the power of God. Some things come by action. God commanded Moses what? To stretch his rod out, right? over the sea. What would have happened if Moses was like, you know what, I'm just going to stick my leg out over it. Mm -hmm. 
or I'm going to do something else. You may not have seen the power of God move. You see? Because he didn't do what God said. He didn't do the deed. Sometimes God would tell you to not do something. Not doing is doing something also, by the way. He'll say, stand still. Wait. Be patient. And if you do that, if you listen to him, his power will move for you. Sometimes he says, move, do, go, run, embrace, start, begin. And if you do what he says, then the power of God will move. I know I talk about this all the time. God told me one time when I didn't have a job, he told me to take a vacation. People was calling me, laughing at me. Ha ah, ha, God told you to take a vacation, man, you crazy. You need to find a job. You're not interviewing, you're not talking. I said, no. I'm taking the vacation because that's what God said. But at the end of that month, God gave me a job better than I ever had before. And you know the funny thing about one of the funny things about that job is that the manager, when she when she when she hired me, she said, I gotta go on leave for about a month, a, a month or two. She said, So I'm gonna send you some books in the mail, and you can start on this date and just study it whenever you get time. And so for the first two months on my job, I didn't even have to work. <laughs> they towed over a company car. Well, they towed, they drove a brand new car. They drove over a company car, parked it in my driveway, gave me the keys, gave me a gas card, set me up on salary, gave me some books, and said, we'll see you in two months. I was young then, you know I was acting up. <laughs> if I had social media, I'd have been all on there, yeah. <laughs> but what did God show me through that? I was obedient. I did something out of the ordinary. I stood in something that was extreme. But I trusted him. I did what he told me to do. And because I did what he told me to do, his power moved. God showed me that was his power. That was his power. That was right before, um, I don't know if some of you may remember this, um, but they, there was a time when um, something happened in the Gulf and all the gas prices went up to like $10 a gallon. I mean, it was like extreme and people was like, some of you folks a little older, you tell your age, you know, you was driving during that time. But uh, no, it was, it was a little while ago, and, and, but all the gas prices were extreme. It was like $10 a gallon. And before all that happened, I was, work, I was working this job. Before I got this new job, I had been on this job, and the money was so tight that I didn't have enough money to put in my gas tank to go to work. That's how tight my money was. And so I got this new job. I got this company car. I was living at home. And so all of a sudden, this gas uh, uh, crisis happened. And folks was like panicking. People was talking about, man, I can't even afford to put two gallons in my tank. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford to go to work. And you know what I was doing with my company car, my gas car? I'm driving down the road, just riding, full tank, because I had to pay for the gas. And so God was showing me, look, he said, even through your suffering, even through your pain, God said, he, God brought provision to me, supernatural provision to me. Amen? All right. Turn on to Judges 6 and 12. Now, the thing I want you to remember here is that your natural strength doesn't matter. When we're talking about the power of God, your natural strength does not matter. Okay? I don't want you to think that in order to, to have the power of God, you have to be naturally strong. It doesn't have anything to do with your natural strength. It has to do with the power of God. And it says in Judges 6 and 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the land of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? 
And so this was Gideon, and he was, you know, they was in a bad place. They was in bondage, and he was just trying to get by. But the Lord came up to him and said, look, I have some great things in store for you. There's some great things that's available to you, but immediately he called him, he said, mighty man of valor. There's been times when God has come to me and said, you know, you know great man, oh, he didn't say great man, he said man of God. And I'd be like, I don't feel like a man of God right now because I was going through so much. You know what I'm saying? I was dealing with so much. But God was saying that because his power was greater than what I thought I was. Amen? Gideon didn't think he was much of anything. But God said, mighty man of valor. Because God wasn't defining him according to his own abilities. God was defining him according to whether or not he had access to the power of God. It was his access to the power of God that made him a mighty man of valor. And what did God say on the end of, the, of this verse? He says, have not I sent thee? He was trying to make him understand, look, the power is with you because I'm with you. The power is with you because I sent you. And I'm going to say it to those of you today. The power of God is with you because you are a child of God. Amen? By the very thing of you being a child of God, the power is with you. Stop looking at yourself and begin to look at your heavenly father. Go through the scriptures and see the great and mightiness of God and understand that because he's able to do all those things, you're able to do great and mighty things also. Amen? Amen. And so God sends us, and he gives us his power. God called us to walk in his power. It is a gift that he has given to us. Why? Because we're his children. He doesn't walk us, want us to walk in this life and be without victory. He wants us to walk in this life and be what? Victorious. He wants us to be great and mighty men and women of God. But he realizes that we can't be great and mighty in God without his power. Amen? Matthew 10 and 1, last scripture. It says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And there it is, the giving. He gave them power. God has given you power over every work of the enemy. He's given you power to walk in victory. He's given you power to, to, to walk in righteousness. He's given you power to overcome every adversary in your life. He's given you power to walk in purpose. Amen? He's given you power to pray for others that they may come out of their situation. He's given it to you. It's made available to you so you can walk in victory and so everyone else can walk in victory around you also. Even power over death. Didn't Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? He said what? The works that I do, you'll do, right? He said, but greater works you shall do. Do we say Jesus is alive? No. Jesus is not a liar. And so we even have power over death. Some may be looking at me like, I don't know about that, Apostle James. But God has given us his power. Amen? Either we believe what the Bible says or we don't. You can't pick and choose. 
Well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't necessarily believe in all that power stuff. Well, that's all the Bible talks about. Okay? So keys to walking in the power. Keys to walking in the power. Number one, listen for God. Listen for God. Listen for God's instruction. Listen for God's direction. Listen for the things that God is speaking to you. Okay? Try to hear his voice. What is God saying? What is God speaking? What is God doing? Okay? Find out what his will. The, the, the quickest way to see the power of God in your life is to walk in his will. Number two, believe when no one else will. You want to see the power of God? You're going to have to believe when nobody else believes. You're going to have to stand when no one else stands. You're going to have to hold on when nobody else is willing to hold on. When everybody else is going sideways, you're going to have to continue to stand. But you will be the one that will see the power of God. And all your friends will come back and they'll be like, man, I knew God was going to do that. You'd be like, you didn't know when you left me. <laughs> but you have to believe when no one else will. Number three, speak and do. Speak and do. Don't just believe with your mouth. Believe with your actions. A lot of folks like to, like to say what they think God's going to do, but then their actions show something different. So speak what you believe. Do what you believe. Do as you believe. The Bible says faith without works is dead. That's saying you can't just confess something with your mouth, but your actions not line up with what you say you believe. Okay? And so you have to speak it, but you also have to do as you speak or as you believe. Number four, y'all going to like this. Watch God. Watch God. What does the Bible say? Faithful is he who calleth you, who shall what? Also do it. It's God's power. He just wants you walking in faith. He just wants you standing and believing. He just wants you going in the directions and doing the things that he's called you to do. And it's his power that will move on your behalf. Amen? Amen. Everybody please stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name in all things. We give honor and glory to you today, Lord Father. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord Father, that your power, Lord Father, remains on the inside of us, Lord, that we may do great and mighty works in your name, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord Father, that our faith has gone higher, that we may believe for the higher, the greater, the more in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord Father, for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we just bless you. We honor you, Lord Father. We give honor to your name. We give honor to you in all things, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, we bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless the Lord. Every eye closed, every head bowed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, we bless your Lord, we bless your Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, we bless your Lord. Now, if there's anybody in here, eyes closed and heads bowed. Now, if there's anybody in here that um, hasn't seen, you've walked in faith and, and you've loved God and, and, and you've tried to live according to his word, but you haven't seen his power like you would like in your life, I want you to raise your hand right now. In Jesus' name, I see that hand. I see that hand. Oh, we bless the Lord. I see that hand. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, put those hands down. Now, is anybody in here who um, needs the power of God to operate? They're dealing with some stuff. They need the power of God to operate in their lives. I want you to raise your hand right now. In Jesus' name. I see that hand. I see that hand. Oh, we bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. You put your hands down in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless the Lord. Now, if there's anybody here, finally, if there's anybody here that has heard the word of God, who, who believes in the power, and, and you feel like this is a place where you can grow and begin to develop in the power and the greatness of God, 
and you want to be a member of this church, raise your hand in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I see that hand. I see that hand. Oh, we bless the Lord. Put your hands down in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, if there's anybody here that has raised their hand and wants to come forward for prayer, we're going to pray for you right now in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for you. Come forward right now in Jesus' name, and we'll pray for you. In Jesus' name, we bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus' name.